We're back with the new chairman of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee, Daryl Issa. Congressman, good morning. Good morning, Harry. Uh, some of uh, your supporters can't wait for you to get to work. Your detractors say this guy is a, a gadfly with subpoena powers. I'm going to go back to something you told Rush Limbaugh not so long ago that you thought uh, President Obama is one of the most corrupt presidents in modern in modern history. But you know, I walked, a, a I statement walked, that I walked you walked, walked back, back very quickly and right. said it's about the money the administration has had mm -hmm. in a loose fashion. It's more about Congress's mistake in funding. Okay, because my question was, do you think the uh, Obama administration is corrupt? Time and time again, what we've seen with the Obama administration is they played fast and loose with the walking around money Congress gave them. When we saw the Joe Sestak situation, what we found was, yes, that's wrong. Our inspector, others said it was illegal. We also found that the Bush administration admitted doing the same thing. This is what usually happens when our committee does its job, is we find out that there's business as usual, whether it's in the White House or in the bureaucracy, that won't get changed unless we shed light on it mm -hmm. and on a bipartisan basis, hopefully, and in the past it has been, look for those kinds of change. Ed Townsend, I have done a lot of work toward that kind of change. Uh, Wednesday morning, you take over this job. You've had months to think about it. What is the absolute top priority? What's the number one thing on your list? The number one thing for all of us as Republicans is jobs in the economy, but also the confidence in government. If we can, as Speaker-elect Boehner has done, said, look, we're lopping off 5% off of our budgets. Your own personal budget. Our, our own personal budget and my committee budget. Mm -hmm. We can lop off 5% of government through simply saying, find a way to live within that budget. We can save $125 billion in simply not giving out money to Medicare recipients that don't exist for procedures that didn't happen. These are real dollars. 10% of the deficit goes out in wasted money, money that doesn't get one person health care in Medicare. We also have 1.75 estimated, $1.75 trillion worth of excess regulation cost to our businesses. Imagine if we could take even a third or a half of that, a trillion dollars, mm -hmm. off of the cost of doing business in America. How many jobs would come to America? My committee has to work on all those. Uh, you know, it's interesting what is real regulation for some would be excess regulation for others. And among the things that uh, are being talked about is the Environmental Protection Agency and its powers. Uh, cap and trade is dead as far as a legislative issue is concerned. Do you feel like the EPA has too much power and that it's wielding it in a way that ends up achieving the goals of cap and trade? Harry, government has to give predictability. It's why regulations have to flow from the intent of the legislation, and it has to be done over time with public hearings, comments, and buy-in. One of our problems, President Obama recently said that he had learned that there's no such thing as shovel-ready. Mm. Well, during the FDR administration, when the WPA programs and other work programs were put into place, Shovel-ready meant you made a decision today and within a week or two you began working on a project. America has to get EPA, OSHA, uh, Fish and Wildlife, all these agencies have to get to where you can decide to do something worthwhile, get through the process to make sure it's done right, and do it in a short period of time, a year, not 10 years. Mm. The mandate, it seems to me, of uh, especially the new Republicans have been sent to Congress is to shrink the deficit, shrink government, save money. With oversight, how much money do you think you can save taxpayers, say, over the next two years? I'm looking at about $200 billion as the amount that we can either identify and eliminate the waste or at least begin the process. And I'll give you one that's pretty easy. It's been in the papers. In the last days of last Congress, they funded $500 million for a rocket program at NASA that's already been shut down. That can't be too hard to undo. But $500 million here, $500 million there, that's a billion. $125 billion in Medicare. Earl Devaney, who was headed up the stimulus, he's the chairman over there, has done some innovative work to show us how we can find a lot of that fraud and shut it off. No, don't worry about going after somebody 18 months later. Mm -hmm. Make sure the money doesn't go out. That's real savings. Yeah, it's interesting, though, because in the conversation that we had earlier with all uh, with the other members of Congress and a soon-to-be member of Congress, talking about cutting deficits and everything else, 
entitlements still sit out there. And that really is the monkey on the American taxpayer's back. And as Everett Durkin said, a mil billion there, a billion there, and after a while you're talking about real money, we're talking about trillions of dollars. Will this new Congress really be able to even address any of that? Well, you didn't see it here in the last panel. You didn't see the willingness to take the two big issues on. Anthony Weiner started saying that Republicans don't want to protect Social Security and Medicare. Look, when Medicare Part D was put into place, the first thing we did was means test it. We said, look, we're going to do this prescription drug, but only for those who can't afford to do it for themselves. And if you can't afford, we're going to phase out some of the benefits. That's not popular. It's not easy, mm -hmm. but it's got to be on the table. Social Security, some people say, is an easy one to solve because it's money in, money out, but the money doesn't balance. We've got to decide. Baby boomers start collecting on, on right. January 1st. And, and look, my wife's a baby boomer, and she's now going to be collecting. And I'll be collecting at 67. I'm a couple years younger. The fact, though, is that we have to figure out a way either to have more money in or less money out. Very simple. Medicare, though, and we saw this with Obama's health care uh, proposals and the ultimate uh, bill that was passed, Medicare is more complicated. It's rising faster than inflation. There are no cost controls on it. We need to make those changes in addition to getting rid of $125 billion of fraud that goes out every year. Daryl Issa, thanks very much for being Thanks, Harris. I do appreciate it.